Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. I've got a click-free automatic backup hard drive here. So this is just a bog standard USB 2 external hard drive. Um, it just came with some backup software, so they branded it. Um, and this thing is not working. This came in, in came in the other day, and I've been looking at it today. Now, full disclosure, I already know what is wrong with this drive. I've already been looking at it. Um, however, I got like halfway through repairing this thing, and then I was like, this is really interesting, actually. I'm going to reverse everything I've done, put it back together again, and then record the process, so hopefully some people can learn from this. So... Um, this is this video is not going to be um, any kind of masterclass on how to recover data or how to fix a broken hard drive because that's very circumstantial. Um, this is actually what I think I think actually think this is going to be a very niche instance, but it is the second time I've seen this type of failure, which means it's obviously common enough that I think it's worth making a video about it. So let's get started. As I say, customer came in with this, it wasn't powering on, so it was stone dead. They thought that their uh, power adapter was no good. So, uh, and the power adapter they had for it was some third party replacement one that weighed uh, less than a couple of coins in my pocket. So obviously not a good start either. However, I plugged in my power supply uh, and that didn't work either. So I thought, okay, well, it must be a bad enclosure then, right? So the first thing I did was, I put my multimeter across the DC jack, and I'll show you that here. So I put my multimeter into continuity mode. So it beeps, and I put black probe on the side pin, on the negative pin, and then red probe on the positive center pin. And as you can hear, we're shorted to ground on the DC jack. So that's why this thing doesn't power up, because the DC jack is dead short to ground. So uh, that is a really poor start. So you obviously I thought, okay, well, the enclosure's bust, right? Anyone who's in this business knows that these enclosures do die now and then. No big deal. You rip it apart, you take the hard drive out, you put it in a new enclosure that you bought on Amazon for 10 quid or $10. No problem. Jobs are good. So let's take it apart. I've already taken this apart, as you can hear. And inside we've got just a bog standard Western Digital 500 gigabyte hard drive. So far, so good. Now, here's where the problems start. If I now measure the DC jack on this again, with the hard drive removed, I bet you can guess what's going to happen. Absolutely nothing. It's no longer shorted with the hard drive removed. So that means the hard drive itself is shorted. Now, on the back of the hard drive, on the SATA connector, we've got 12... 0, 5, 0, and 3.3. And there's, uh, I think there's three pins per uh, wire. So we've got three pins of 12, as you can see there. Then there's three pins of 0, three pins of 5, three pins of 0 again, and then three pins of 3.3 volts, which I think is not used on a hard drive. So what we'll do now is the three 12 volt pins and then three 0 volt pins, those are the ones we're interested. So I'll stick my probe onto the zero volt pins. And as you can hear, we're shorted out on the actual power pins of the hard drive. So at that point, I was like, well, that's the end of this hard drive then. And that's what got me to thinking. Now, I have before, I have before had a customer who came in with a hard drive where they said they'd had smoke from the hard drive. They'd taken the board off and found a, a, a blackened component on there, which turned out to be a diode. I removed that diode for them and the hard drive lived. So that got me to thinking, fine, let's have a look at this one. Let's just try. So hard drive out and I'm going to remove this board from it. So here's our controller board. So the guy that I wanted to check on is the um, over voltage protection diode here in the top corner. Now these guys are commonly seen on laptops as well. I've got videos where I've um, found problem diodes on laptops. What this guy is, it's a Xena diode and it's wired in reverse across the power input. So it's, it's wired backwards across 12 volts and ground. 
and it serves two purposes there. Firstly, if the drive is connected in reverse polarity but for some whatever reason, then the diode will conduct and it will short the power supply out, preventing 12 volts from going onto the ground rail. So it shorts out the power supply but protects the circuit board. Then the other reason for it, the more useful reason, is that the diode is a Zener diode, which means it has a very low breakdown voltage. In this case, it's probably about 20 volts on this thing, which means if the 12 volt rail is running really hot and goes over 20 volts, then the diode will begin to conduct backwards, shorting that 20 volts down to ground, and it will clamp it. And I've seen these diodes fail on laptops, and one of the this hard drive that I mentioned that came from the customer, the diode had blown up on it. So what I thought on this one, I was like, well, sure, let's take the diode off just in case it's failed. And once again, I can show you this in action, multimeter into continuity mode. And if I check both sides of this, as you can see, it's in a dead short circuit in both directions. So once again, we can see our short circuit there. Another thing to keep in mind as well is that this thing is being powered from a 2 amp 12 volt power supply. Now the last hard drive I'd seen that had blown up, that was actually in a computer. So remember, if this hard drive had been in a computer with a 800 watt power supply in it, then that shorted diode is going to dump whatever your 12 volt rail will supply into the diode. So that would have been the difference between this one just going dead short and not working, or if I'd plugged this into a PC, that would have gone nuclear. So what I'll do now is I'll warm up my soldering iron and remove it. So if you've got a hot air station, you can hot air it off the board if you want, at the risk of damaging the connector, which you may or may not care about. However, if you've got a soldering iron, you can do a method that I call the stepping technique, to remove this SMD diode. So what I'm going to do is, now I strongly recommend wetting both sides of it with some solder. I'll do this again just to show that. So I'll just put a bit of solder on each side of it, just so that solder join has been flowed. There we go, so both sides of it have been heated to melt point. And now I'm going to heat both sides of it again and again until it comes off the board. So I'm going to start going, I'm going to go heat, heat, and then grab it with the tweezers and just go back and forth from one side to the other while trying to lift it away with the tweezers. Ah. Damn it. Okay, what I'll do, I'm just going to try and push it to one side instead. There we go. And I've just managed to walk that guy off of the board. Not a very elegant way of doing it, but it means you, you can do it without hot air. And it also means that we didn't damage any of the surrounding area either. Of course, if you've got hot tweezers, hot tweezers would be a really good way of doing this as well. I hear there's a new pair of hot tweezers on the market made by Mini, which look pretty good. I might be buying some of those myself. Anyway, um, so now we've removed that diode. So firstly, let's check the diode. Multimeter in continuity mode. Now obviously being a diode, it should conduct in one direction, but not the other. Short. And short. So this diode is shorted in both directions. So we've confirmed that this diode has failed. And now if we bring the board back in, if I just go across these pads, remember we checked this earlier, we're no longer short circuited. So we've now resolved the short circuit on this controller board. So let's reassemble the hard drive and see if it powers up. And as a final check, I'll just do that same continuity check on the uh, SATA connector that I did before, just to prove a point.
And as you can see, we're no longer shorted on the 12 volt line anymore. Bang in. So now we've got a hard drive that's ready to plug into a dock and we can attempt to recover the data from it. Right, so I've got my uh, recovery laptop here. Please ignore the giant bar down the center of the screen. This laptop is not designed for general use. Okay, and power on. So we've got power to our dock and the hard drive has spun up so I can feel the drive spinning. Good start, good start. Right, so the driver spun up and is now detected by the computer. However, it's apparently uninitialized. So we're almost there. We've got the drive detected, but the disk you've inserted is not readable by this computer. And if you try and plug this into Windows, you'll get something very similar. The drive will not be visible in this PC. And if you go to disk management, then it will just show as an uninitialized disk or just raw data. So in order to get around this, I'm going to use test disk um, by CG Security, um, which is used, which can be used to recover lost partitions. So let's just go into the screen now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load up a terminal command. Now, although I'm working on a Mac here, you can do exactly the same thing with a Windows computer. Test disk is multi-platform and it works, it's, it works in exactly the same way, whether you're on Mac or Windows or Linux. So what we're doing here is pretty much the same. Um, I'm, low, I'm working on a Mac which is functionally identical to Linux for the purposes of this video. Um, however, if you're on Windows, you just need to download test disk and just run the testdisk.exe file. Uh, I need to launch from Bash here, so I'm just going to CD over to my test disk folder and run test disk. And that gets us to here. So uh, I'm not going to make any log files for this. Don't log. Right, and as you can see, we've got our disk available. So I'm just going to go in with uh, dev disk 2, 500 gigabyte hard drive, select. Now, we need, to, we need to know what kind of partition data we're looking for. So the two that we're most likely to have are either just Intel PC partition or an EFI GPT partitions. So that's like that's master boot record or GPT. Now, if you're if the disk is like a Windows drive uh, that you've been booting from with Windows 10 or something like that, you're almost certainly on GPT by now. However, a lot of external disks are probably still master boot record. So I'm gonna guess that this one is master boot record and select Intel PC. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to analyze the drive to look for lost partitions. So enter again. And I'm going to just do the quick search. So quick search, enter again. As you can see, we're finding stuff. So this drive, it appears, is probably not actually failing. It's just scrambled where it had a bad day. So it's found a lost NTFS partition here. And as you can see, the start is, you know, at the start of the disk and the end point is at the end of the disk. That looks great. We've also got the, um, the, the volume name as well, click free storage. There's also some other system stuff as well. So this all looks promising. So uh, I'm going to say enter to continue. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to write that partition structure back to the disk. So we're going to write those partitions back onto the disk. And theoretically, because we will have written the partition structure onto the disk, all of the data that is stored on the disk should now become readable again. So write. Yes, I definitely want to write it. OK. So now what we need to do is either um, if we were connected internally, we'd need to reboot. But what I can do, I can just disconnect and reconnect the drive again. So I'm going to quit out of test disk. And I'm going to ignore that. And already we've now mounted the drive. It's asking me if I want a time machine to it. I don't want a time machine to it. However, now we now have access to the data on the drive. So we're now ready to copy data. So 
Again, if your drive has got bad sectors and stuff like that, you may not have had quite as smooth a process as I just had. However, as you can see, we had a drive that appeared to be totally dead and a laboratory job. Um, when I first saw that short circuit on the drive, I was, I, I was convinced. I was like, no, nope, I'm done. That's got to go off to a data recovery specialist, which I am not. However, as I say, with just a little bit of poking around, we actually found a very simple solution. And then using test disk, we can restore the lost partitions to get the drive readable again. And that's how we've now just apparently completely recovered this drive. The chances are I could put that back into the enclosure again and it would work. However, given what we've just done with the enclosure and the hard drive, I would definitely not reuse this. It probably still works. It might even pass diagnostics. However, hard drives are cheap. Don't mess about. Just replace it. So I'm going to go ahead and try and recover the data now. And just for posterity, I just plugged it into uh, my Windows workstation just to check if I could actually run the click-free software. And I found with hidden items showed on, what it's actually doing is hiding the, cut, the actual backups in a hidden folder. So if I go into S, 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 click-free backup, number one, C, and here is our customer data. So as I say, software issue, this click-free software is obviously a bit weird, but the data is ready for recovery. So that's everything. Uh, thank you very much for watching everyone. Bit of a niche repair, but hopefully it just gives you guys some ideas that when you're faced with something that is stone dead, might just be worth getting your multimeter out just in case you get lucky like I did here. I think that's a lucky fix. However, by having the uh, just by having a bit of knowledge on something that you could check for, it might save your life. Uh, stick around for the end card. All of my support links and Discord server and stuff are there. And thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.